Coco. Greetings all, Shane Bruce, Resto Mon Daisy, and we've got a uh, quick in, quick out gun to show you today. Uh, no major work was required on this beast. Uh, the only problem it had is it would not fire. Now, it will cock and the uh, sear will release the trigger and the plunger will go forward and nothing will happen after that. Uh, the client has actually done quite a bit of work on the gun himself. He replaced the original leather seal set with a replacement seal set in leather with the original top hat. So that means that the, the plunger assembly in the gun right now looks rather like that. And if you want to see a top hat with no clothes on, this is what it looks like without the leather seal in place. And as you can see, it's a small diameter tube and it's got two little holes here at the base that allow air to travel up the air tube and fire the BB. That's, that's why it's called a top hat. It's the old original system. Doesn't look like that anymore. Nowadays, we have a single unitized air tube, uh, either overboard or not. This is not, this is a standard bore. And a abutment seal. This little plastic bit here seals up the abutment and this is a compression cup. So this part stays inside the gun and the air tube goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth when it's working properly. Now what we had happening in the gun was, this is the leather seal, the replacement leather seal that came out of it. And you can see that leather, because it's a flexible material, has actually got an impression now of that. If you'll notice that there's a, uh, you know, the, the way it's dented in the holes, you can see where it is formed. And that gives leather an advantage over the synthetics because it will uh, mold itself. And if it will stick by the abutment uh, up in the end of the compression chamber, it will seal very well indeed. But the issue with this particular leather seal is that the hole that is in the middle is really, really tight. So what was happening to our customer is that after we installed the seal set, instead of the seal staying put, it was just riding up and down with the air tube. Wherever the air tube went, the seal went. It did not stay where it was supposed to stay because it couldn't find enough bite around the edge of the seal. Now, the diameter on this thing is right around 82, 0.82, you know, which is correct. Uh, the diameter on the synthetic steel synthetic seal is about 84 and the reason for that is if you take a look here you'll notice that's not quite a square edge it's a little beveled it's got a little wider here than it is on this edge there and this is how it sits in the uh, compression chamber you know this side faces the piston this side faces the abutment washer itself so once you get one of these tapped into place because of the taper it usually stays put uh, in particular case of this replacement leather seal set the interior hole was so small that it was dragging the uh, abutment washer back and forth no compression well once we got that sussed out we started swapping in combinations of mainsprings and air tubes in order to get to uh, a point where the gun would fire and be as original as it possibly could be. So we've come to, uh, got to a solution where the gun runs about 250 feet a second with one of these synthetic uh, seals at the base of the abutment washer, right about here. That stays put. And then the original top hat air tube with a leather seal on it pushes air through the compression chamber and fires the gun with the original bottle cap. Now, there's a couple of things about the gun that are kind of cool. This is a oak stocked Red Rider. And the reason I can tell it's oak is because of the grain pattern of the wood, the extreme hardness of the wood. You'll notice there's hardly any deformation anywhere on this butt stock, right or left side. And there's no cracks or anything like that. It is a uh, 46 model post-war gun. You can tell that because it's got a cast iron lever. Ignore these screws because these are only in here long enough to finish the mechanical aspects. These are the original screws, which were slot tips with the small washers. This is the trigger bolt. This is the lever bolt. And this is the stock bolt. Now it also had this large uh, stock screw, which is a little bit of a, uh, and a 46, not unusual, but sometimes you'll see them with the small stock screws. Uh, and we'll take a look at the finish on this gun because this gun has got an example, a really good example of patina. Uh, it was originally a blued gun, and as we rotate it under the light, you'll notice that you'll notice that there's uh, some blotchiness there. Well, that's where the original blue has basically been eroded away. Uh, we have a roll stamp there. We see that's a Red Rider, and it's a number 111 model 40. 
and it's a Plymouth gun and it has a uh, fixed rear sight. Now let's roll on down the barrel and you see that uh, kind of a rust brown purplish plumish looking color. That's all Padina. The darker spots are where the few spots where the original blue is still intact but time and use and uh, lots of use have worn the original blue away and it's been replaced by a lighter end grain rust. So let's flip her over and take a look at the uh, mother-in-law side. Now you notice once again the grain pattern on oak is very distinctive. You notice that the uh, lines um, along the stock, those are individual growth bands and they're very defined. If we come up here to the uh, fore end, which is poplar, you'll notice it's a, it's a blander look. More uniform, but certainly blander, not oak. And we go up to the front of the gun, take a look at the bottle cap, rest the barrel shroud. Really good shape. For a 1946 uh, Red Rider carbine, it's an excellent example of a weapon. And depending on which combination of uh, air tubes and mainsprings and seal sets that the original the customer wants for the gun, it'll be up and running again. So I wanted to show that to you. And, uh, you know, you can buy leather replacement sets but there may be some issues because you know this one was just too snug but here's the here's the catch it really needs to be snug because if it's sloppy let's uh, let's take a look at say this one that came out of a gun if it's sloppy and it just flops around then you're losing air right there at that seam and that's a that's a critical seam you know a critical sealing point but in the case of this tube and in the case of this seal it just didn't have what it takes to stick to the abutment the way it's supposed to. So, sad in some aspects, but that's the reality of the gun. Well, she's shooting now, so I'm waiting to hear back from the customer, see which way he wants to set it up, and then it's off to home. That's all we've got for you today, kids. Shane Bruce, Rest on My Daisy, signing off.